Open Source Software is a type of computer software in which source code is released under a license in which the copyright holder grants users the rights to study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose. Open source software may be developed in a collaborative public manner. According to scientists who have studied it, open source software is a prominent example of open collaboration. The term is often written without a hyphen as open source software, open source software development, or collaborative development between multiple independent contributors, generates an increasingly more diverse scope of design perspective than any company is capable of developing and sustaining long term. A 2008 report by the Standish Group states that adoption of open source software models has resulted in savings of about $60 billion, .48 billion pounds per year to consumers. History End of 1990s, foundation of the Open Source Initiative In the early days of computing, programmers and developers shared software in order to learn from each other and evolve the field of computing. Eventually, the open source notion moved to the wayside of commercialization of software in the years 1970–1980. However, academics still often developed software collaboratively. For example Donald Nuth in 1979 with the text typesetting system or Richard Stallman in 1983 with the new operating system. In 1997, Eric Raymond published The Cathedral and the Bazaar, a reflective analysis of the hacker community and free software principles. The paper received significant attention in early 1998, and was one factor in motivating Netscape Communications Corporation to release their popular Netscape Communicator Internet Suite as free software. This source code subsequently became the basis behind SeaMonkey, Mozilla Firefox, Thunderbird and Composer. Netscape's act prompted Raymond and others to look into how to bring the Free Software Foundation's free software ideas and perceived benefits to the commercial software industry. They concluded that FSF's social activism was not appealing to companies like Netscape, and looked for a way to rebrand the free software movement to emphasize the business potential of sharing and collaborating on software source code. The new term they chose was, "...open source." which was soon adopted by Bruce Perrins, publisher Tim O'Reilly, Linus Torvalds, and others. The Open Source Initiative was founded in February 1998 to encourage use of the new term and evangelize open source principles, while the Open Source Initiative sought to encourage the use of the new term and evangelize the principles it adhered to. Commercial software vendors found themselves increasingly threatened by the concept of freely distributed software and universal access to an application's source code. A Microsoft executive publicly stated in 2001 that Open source is an intellectual property destroyer. I can't imagine something that could be worse than this for the software business and the intellectual property business. However, while free and open source software has historically played a role outside of the mainstream of private software development, companies as large as Microsoft have begun to develop official open source presences on the Internet. IBM, Oracle, Google and State Farm are just a few of the companies with a serious public stake in today's competitive open source market. There has been a significant shift in the corporate philosophy concerning the development of FOSS. The free software movement was launched in 1983. In 1998, a group of individuals advocated that the term free software should be replaced by open source software as an expression which is less ambiguous and more comfortable for the corporate world. Software developers may want to publish their software with an open source license, so that anybody may also develop the same software or understand its internal functioning. With open source software, generally anyone is allowed to create modifications of it, port it to new operating systems and instruction set architectures, share it with others or, in some cases, market it. Scholars Kasson and Ryan have pointed out several policy-based reasons for adoption of open source, in particular, the heightened value proposition from open source when compared to most proprietary formats in the following categories. Security 
affordability transparency perpetuity interoperability flexibility localization particularly in the context of local governments who make software decisions Kassin and Ryan argue that governments have an inherent responsibility and fiduciary duty to taxpayers which includes the careful analysis of these factors when deciding to purchase proprietary software or implement an open source option. The open source definition presents an open source philosophy and further defines the terms of use, modification, and redistribution of open source software. Software licenses grant rights to users which would otherwise be reserved by copyright law to the copyright holder. Several open source software licenses have qualified within the boundaries of the open source definition. The most prominent and popular example is the New General Public License (GPL), which allows free distribution under the condition that further developments and applications are put under the same license. Thus also free, the open source label came out of a strategy session held on April 7, 1998 in Palo Alto in reaction to Netscape's January 1998 announcement of a source code release for Navigator as Mozilla. A group of individuals at the session included Tim O'Reilly, Linus Torvalds, Tom Paquin, Jamie Zarwinski, Larry Wall, Brian Bellendorf, Samir Parikh, Eric Allman, Greg Olson, Paul Vixie, John Ousterhout, Guido Van Rossum, Philip Zimmerman, John Gilmore and Eric S. Raymond. They used the opportunity before the release of Navigator's source code to clarify a potential confusion caused by the ambiguity of the word free in English. Many people claimed that the birth of the Internet, since 1969, started the open source movement, while others do not distinguish between open source and free software movements. The Free Software Foundation, FSF, started in 1985, intended the word free to mean freedom to distribute or free as in free speech and not freedom from cost or free as in free beer. Since a great deal of free software already was and still is free of charge, such free software became associated with zero cost, which seemed anti-commercial. The Open Source Initiative (OSI) was formed in February 1998 by Eric Raymond and Bruce Perrins. With at least 20 years of evidence from case histories of closed software development versus open development already provided by the internet developer community, the OSI presented the open source case to commercial businesses, like Netscape. The OSI hoped that the use of the label, open source, a term suggested by Christine Peterson of the Foresight Institute at the strategy session, would eliminate ambiguity, particularly for individuals who perceive free software as anti-commercial. They sought to bring a higher profile to the practical benefits of freely available source code, and they wanted to bring major software businesses and other high-tech industries into open source. Perrins attempted to register, open source, as a service mark for the OSI, but that attempt was impractical by trademark standards. Meanwhile, due to the presentation of Raymond's paper to the upper management at Netscape, Raymond only discovered when he read the press release, and was called by Netscape CEO Jim Barksdale's PA later in the day. Netscape released its Navigator source code as open source, with favorable results. <laughs> <laughs> Definitions The Open Source Initiative's OSI definition is recognized by several governments internationally as the standard or de facto definition. In addition, many of the world's largest open source software projects and contributors, including Debian, Drupal Association, FreeBSD Foundation, Linux Foundation, Mozilla Foundation, Wikimedia Foundation, WordPress Foundation have committed to upholding the OSI's mission and open source definition through the OSI Affiliate Agreement. OSI uses the open source definition to determine whether it considers a software license open source. The definition was based on the Debian Free Software Guidelines, written and adapted primarily by Perrins. Perrins did not base his writing on the four freedoms 
from the Free Software Foundation FSF, which were only widely available later. Under Perrin's definition, open source is a broad software license that makes source code available to the general public with relaxed or non-existent restrictions on the use and modification of the code. It is an explicit feature of open source that it puts very few restrictions on the use or distribution by any organization or user, in order to enable the rapid evolution of the software. Despite initially accepting it, Richard Stallman of the FSF now flatly opposes the term open source being applied to what they refer to as free software, although he agrees that the two terms describe almost the same category of software. Stallman considers equating the terms incorrect and misleading. Stallman also opposes the professed pragmatism of the open source initiative, as he fears that the free software ideals of freedom and community are threatened by compromising on the FSF's idealistic standards for software freedom. The FSF considers free software to be a subset of open source software, and Richard Stallman explained that DRM software, for example, can be developed as open source, despite that it does not give its users freedom it restricts them, and thus doesn't qualify as free software. <laughs> open source software licensing When an author contributes code to an open source project, e.g., apache.org, they do so under an explicit license, e.g., the Apache Contributor License Agreement or an implicit license, e.g., the open source license under which the project is already licensing code. Some open source projects do not take contributed code under a license, but actually require joint assignment of the author's copyright in order to accept code contributions into the project. Examples of free software license, open source licenses include Apache License, BSD License, New General Public License, New Lesser General Public License, MIT License, Eclipse Public License, and Mozilla Public License. The proliferation of open source licenses is a negative aspect of the open source movement because it is often difficult to understand the legal implications of the differences between licenses. With more than 180,000 open source projects available and more than 1,400 unique licenses, the complexity of deciding how to manage open source use within closed source commercial enterprises has dramatically increased. Some are homegrown, while others are modeled after mainstream FOSS licenses such as Berkeley Software Distribution, BSD, Apache, MIT style, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or New General Public License, GPL. In view of this, open source practitioners are starting to use classification schemes in which FOSS licenses are grouped typically based on the existence and obligations imposed by the copyleft provision, the strength of the copyleft provision. An important legal milestone for the open source, free software movement was passed in 2008, when the U.S. Federal Appeals Court ruled that free software licenses definitely do set legally binding conditions on the use of copyrighted work, and they are therefore enforceable under existing existing copyright law. As a result, if end users violate the licensing conditions, their license disappears, meaning they are infringing copyright. Despite this licensing risk, most commercial software vendors are using open source software in commercial products while fulfilling the license terms, e.g. leveraging the Apache license. Certifications. <laughs> <laughs> Certification can help to build user confidence. Certification could be applied to the simplest component, to a whole software system. The United Nations University International Institute for Software Technology, initiated a project known as, the Global Desktop Project. This project aims to build a desktop interface that every end-user is able to understand and interact with, thus crossing the language and cultural barriers. The project would improve developing nations' access to information systems. UNU, IIST hopes to achieve this without any compromise in the quality of the software by introducing certifications. <laughs> <laughs> Open source software development Topic. <laughs> <laughs> 
Development model In his 1997 essay The Cathedral and the Bazaar, open-source evangelist Eric S. Raymond suggests a model for developing OS known as the Bazaar model. Raymond likens the development of software by traditional methodologies to building a cathedral, "...carefully crafted by individual wizards or small bands of majors working in splendid isolation." He suggests that all software should be developed using the bizarre style, which he described as a great babbling bazaar of differing agendas and approaches. In the traditional model of development, which he called the cathedral model, development takes place in a centralized way. Roles are clearly defined. Roles include people dedicated to designing the architects, people responsible for managing the project, and people responsible for implementation. Traditional software engineering follows the cathedral model. The bizarre model, however, is different. In this model, roles are not clearly defined. Gregorio Robles suggests that software developed using the bizarre model should exhibit the following patterns. Users should be treated as co-developers. The users are treated like co-developers and so they should have access to the source code of the software. Furthermore, users are encouraged to submit additions to the software, code fixes for the software, bug reports, documentation etc. Having more co-developers increases the rate at which the software evolves. Linus's law states, "...given enough eyeballs all bugs are shallow." This means that if many users view the source code, they will eventually find all bugs and suggest how to fix them. Note that some users have advanced programming skills, and furthermore, each user's machine provides an additional testing environment. This new testing environment offers that ability to find and fix a new bug. Early releases The first version of the software should be released as early as possible so as to increase one's chances of finding co-developers early. Frequent integration Code changes should be integrated merged into a shared code base as often as possible so as to avoid the overhead of fixing a large number of bugs at the end of the project life cycle. Some open source projects have nightly builds where integration is done automatically on a daily basis. Several versions There should be at least two versions of the software. There should be a buggier version with more features and a more stable version with fewer features. The buggy version, also called the development version, is for users who want the immediate use of the latest features and are willing to accept the risk of using code that is not yet thoroughly tested. The users can then act as co-developers, reporting bugs and providing bug fixes. High modularization. The general structure of the software should be modular allowing for parallel development on independent components. Dynamic decision making structure. There is a need for a decision-making structure, whether formal or informal, that makes strategic decisions depending on changing user requirements and other factors. Compare with extreme programming, data suggests, however, that OS is not quite as democratic as the bizarre model suggests. An analysis of 5 billion bytes of free, open source code by 31,999 developers shows that 74% of the code was written by the most active 10% of authors. The average number of authors involved in a project was 5.1, with the median at 2. <laughs> <laughs> Advantages and disadvantages Open source software is usually easier to obtain than proprietary software, often resulting in increased use. Additionally, the availability of an open source implementation of a standard can increase adoption of that standard. It has also helped to build developer loyalty as developers feel empowered and have a sense of ownership of the end product. Moreover, lower costs of marketing and logistical services are needed for OS. OS also helps companies keep abreast of technology developments. It is a good tool to promote a company's image, including its commercial products. The OS development approach has helped produce reliable, high quality software quickly and inexpensively. Open source development offers the potential for a more flexible technology and quicker innovation. It is said to be more reliable since it typically has thousands of independent programmers testing and fixing bugs of the software. 
Open source is not dependent on the company or author that originally created it. Even if the company fails, the code continues to exist and be developed by its users. Also, it uses open standards accessible to everyone, thus, it does not have the problem of incompatible formats that exist in proprietary software. It is flexible because modular systems allow programmers to build custom interfaces, or add new abilities to it and it is innovative since open source programs are the product of collaboration among a large number of different programmers. The mix of divergent perspectives, corporate objectives, and personal goals speeds up innovation. Moreover, free software can be developed in accord with purely technical requirements. It does not require thinking about commercial pressure that often degrades the quality of the software. Commercial pressures make traditional software developers pay more attention to customers' requirements than to security requirements. Since such features are somewhat invisible to the customer, it is sometimes said that the open source development process may not be well defined and the stages in the development process, such as system testing and documentation, may be ignored. However, this is only true for small, mostly single programmer projects. Larger, successful projects do define and enforce at least some rules as they need them to make the teamwork possible. In the most complex projects these rules may be as strict as reviewing even minor change by two independent developers. Not all OS initiatives have been successful, for example Source Exchange and Easel. Software experts and researchers who are not convinced by open source's ability to produce quality systems identify the unclear process, the late defect discovery and the lack of any empirical evidence as the most important problems collected data concerning productivity and quality. It is also difficult to design a commercially sound business model around the open source paradigm. Consequently, only technical requirements may be satisfied and not the ones of the market. In terms of security, open source may allow hackers to know about the weaknesses or loopholes of the software more easily than closed source software. It depends on control mechanisms in order to create effective performance of autonomous agents who participate in virtual organizations. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Development tools. In OS development, tools are used to support the development of the product and the development process itself. Revision control systems such as Concurrent Version System (CVS) and later Subversion (SVN) and Git are examples of tools, often themselves open source, help manage the source code files and the changes to those files for a software project. The projects are frequently hosted and published on sites like Launchpad, Bitbucket, and GitHub. Open source projects are often loosely organized with little formalized process modeling or support, but utilities such as issue trackers are often used to organize open source software development. Commonly used bug trackers include Bugzilla and Redmine. Tools such as mailing lists and IRC provide means of coordination among developers. Centralized code hosting sites also have social features that allow developers to communicate. Topic: Organizations. Some of the more prominent organizations involved in OS development include the Apache Software Foundation, creators of the Apache Web Server, the Linux Foundation, a non-profit which as of 2012 employed Linus Torvalds, the creator of the Linux operating system kernel, the Eclipse Foundation, home of the Eclipse software development platform, the Debian Project, creators of the influential Debian GNU, Linux distribution, the Mozilla Foundation, home of the Firefox web browser, and OW2, European-born community developing open source middleware. New organizations tend to have a more sophisticated governance model and their membership is often formed by legal entity members. Open Source Software Institute is a membership based, non profit organization established in 2001 that promotes the development and implementation of open source software solutions within U.S. federal, state, and local government agencies. 
OSSI's efforts have focused on promoting adoption of open source software programs and policies within federal government and defense and homeland security communities. Open Source for America is a group created to raise awareness in the United States federal government about the benefits of open source software. Their stated goals are to encourage the government's use of open source software, participation in open source software projects, and incorporation of open source community dynamics to increase government transparency. MILOS is a group dedicated to the advancement of OS use and creation in the military. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Funding. Open source software is widely used both as independent applications and as components in non-open source applications. Customers may be willing to use open technology under standard commercial terms and thereby pay for open source software when additional value is created. This can be the case for legal protection e.g., indemnification from copyright or patent infringement, commercial grade QA and professional support, training, consulting that are typical of commercial software, while also receiving the benefits of fine-grained control and lack of lock-in that comes with open source. Open source software is used as components inside of proprietary, for-profit products and services by many independent software vendors ISVs, value-added resellers VARs, and hardware vendors OEMs or ODMs in frameworks, modules, and libraries. Topic. Comparisons with other software licensing – development models Topic. Closed source – proprietary software The debate over open source vs closed source alternatively called proprietary software is sometimes heated. The top four reasons as provided by Open Source Business Conference Survey individuals or organizations choose open source software are Lower cost Security No vendor lock-in Better quality since innovative companies no longer rely heavily on software sales, proprietary software has become less of a necessity. As such, things like open source content management system or CMS Deployments are becoming more commonplace. In 2009, the U.S. White House switched its CMS system from a proprietary system to Drupal Open Source CMS. Further, companies like Noval who traditionally sold software the old-fashioned way continually debate the benefits of switching to open source availability, having already switched part of the product offering to open source code. In this way, open source software provides solutions to unique or specific problems. As such, it is reported that 98% of enterprise level companies use open source software offerings in some capacity. With this market shift, more critical systems are beginning to rely on open source offerings, allowing greater funding, such as US Department of Homeland Security grants, to help hunt for security bugs. According to a pilot study of organizations adopting or not adopting OS, the following factors of statistical significance were observed in the manager's beliefs, a attitudes toward outcomes, b the influences and behaviors of others, and c their ability to act. Proprietary source distributors have started to develop and contribute to the open source community due to the market share shift, doing so by the need to reinvent their models in order to remain competitive. Many advocates argue that open source software software is inherently safer because any person can view, edit, and change code. A study of the Linux source code has 0.17 bugs per 1000 lines of code while proprietary software generally scores 20 to 30 bugs per 1000 lines. <laughs> Free software According to the free software movement's leader, Richard Stallman, the main difference is that by choosing one term over the other i.e. either «open source» or «free software», one lets others know about what one's goals are. Open source is a development methodology, free software is a social movement. Nevertheless, there is significant overlap between open source software and free software. The FSF said that the term «open source» 
fosters an ambiguity of a different kind such that it confuses the mere availability of the source with the freedom to use, modify, and redistribute it. On the other hand, the free software term was criticized for the ambiguity of the word free as available at no cost which was seen as discouraging for business adoption, and for the historical ambiguous usage of the term, developers have used the alternative terms free and open source software FOSS, or free, Libra and open source software FLOSS, consequently, to describe open source software that is also free software. While the definition of open source software is very similar to the FSF's free software definition it was based on the Debian free software guidelines, written and adapted primarily by Bruce Perrins with input from Eric S. Raymond and others, the term, open source, was originally intended to be trademarkable, however, the term was deemed too descriptive, so no trademark exists. The OSI would prefer that people treat open source as if it were a trademark, and use it only to describe software licensed under an OSI approved license. OSI certified is a trademark licensed only to people who are distributing software licensed under a license listed on the Open Source Initiatives list. <laughs> open source versus source available Although the OSI definition of open source software is widely accepted, a small number of people and organizations use the term to refer to software where the source is available for viewing, but which may not legally be modified or redistributed. Such software is more often referred to as source available, or as shared source, a term coined by Microsoft in 2001. While in 2007 two of Microsoft's shared source initiative licenses were certified by the OSI, most licenses from the SSI program are still source available only. <laughs> <laughs> Open sourcing Open sourcing is the act of propagating the open source movement, most often referring to releasing previously proprietary software under an open source, free software license, but it may also refer programming open source software or installing open source software. Notable software packages, previously proprietary, which have been open sourced include Netscape Navigator, the code of which became the basis of the Mozilla and Mozilla Firefox web browsers, StoreOffice, which became the base of the OpenOffice.org Office Suite and LibreOffice Global File System, was originally GPL'd, then made proprietary in 2001, but in 2004 was re-GPL'd. SAPDB, which has become MAXDB, and is now distributed and owned by MySQLAB Interbase Database, which was open sourced by Borland in 2000 and presently exists as a commercial product and an open source fork Firebird before changing the license of software. Distributors usually audit the source code for third party licensed code which they would have to remove or obtain permission for its relicense. Backdoors and other malware should also be removed as they may easily be discovered after release of the code. Topic. Current applications and adoption Topic. Widely used open source software Open source software projects are built and maintained by a network of volunteer programmers and are widely used in free as well as commercial products. Prime examples of open source products are the Apache HTTP server, the e-commerce platform Oscommerce, Internet browsers Mozilla Firefox and Chromium the project where the vast majority of development of the freeware Google Chrome is done and the full office suite LibreOffice. One of the most successful open source products is the new, Linux operating system, an open source Unix-like operating system, and its derivative Android, an operating system for mobile devices. In some industries, open source software is the norm. Topic: Extensions for non-software use. While the term open source 
Applied originally only to the source code of software, it is now being applied to many other areas such as open source ecology, a movement to decentralize technologies so that any human can use them. However, it is often misapplied to other areas which have different and competing principles, which overlap only partially. The same principles that underlie open source software can be found in many other ventures, such as open source hardware, Wikipedia, and open access publishing. Collectively, these principles are known as open source, open content, and open collaboration. Any system of innovation or production that relies on goal-oriented yet loosely coordinated participants, who interact to create a product or service of economic value, which they make available to contributors and non-contributors alike. This culture or ideology takes the view that the principles apply more generally to facilitate concurrent input of different agendas, approaches and priorities, in contrast with more centralized models of development such as those typically used in commercial companies. <laughs> See also